pulled it out. I was showing Melinda, and she goes, that's the color of the car? And I go, no, the, the brightness of the, of the red of the paint scheme didn't translate onto the T-shirt very well at all. Again, this is Dale Jr. NASCAR problems, okay? All this is relative. This is a Dale Jr. NASCAR podcast. So this is uh, your host, being a Dale Jr. fan, being incredibly picky about the hue or brightness of a paint scheme on a T-shirt. But it's a podcast devoted to Dale Jr., so I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> I know, all things being relative, this has no bearing in the world, but because of the podcast, that's my uh, justification for harping on the fact that the bright paint scheme on the track doesn't translate very well to a t-shirt. Now, I did pick up another one. Uh, actually, and, and it's a it's a t-shirt for, for the Exalta paint scheme that I like quite a bit more. I mentioned this in a previous podcast. It looks old school. There's uh, the font that, uh, that Dale Earnhardt Jr., is written on on the shirt is very reminiscent of sort of the 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 late 80s early 90s fonts you would see i mean like when i saw it like if you just saw the earnhardt name on the t-shirt and nothing else you would have at least i did i immediately applied it to dale earnhardt senior not necessarily junior it just has kind of an old school uh, again late 80s mid 90s uh feel to it it's a gray shirt and the red on the shirt pops better on that paint scheme than the other one does. But it's just kind of a bummer because that's a really cool, bright red and orange and yellow paint scheme. And it's it's kind of sucks that you can't get the gear that really does that paint scheme justice, right? Okay, again, Dale Earnhardt Jr. NASCAR problems. I have t-shirts with the right paint scheme on, scheme on it that I can wear on Sunday, and that's really all that uh, matters. Now, here's my other complaint, and this is something that I've harped on before, and then we'll get to the race preview portion of this week's podcast. But here's my other complaint. Uh, the Grey Ghost Nationwide gear. Let me, just, uh, let, me, let me double check this for just a second, just to be sure. Because, and this might just be an issue with me. If you... I, I would be curious, and please drop me an email, um, talkshownerd at gmail.com. I would, I would appreciate it because I'd like to get your thoughts for the next podcast uh, if you are the same way that I am. But as I've mentioned before, I like wearing the gear for um, the paint scheme that Dale Jr. is running that weekend. I've always been that way. I want to have you know the right die cast car. I want to have the right paint scheme shirt. Uh, for that uh, for that particular race, okay, that's just kind of uh, how I've always uh, expressed my fandom. Now, granted, this year I have not uh, purchased a 124 scale diecast for this year's nationwide paint scheme. I do have a 164 scale diecast uh, for this year, but I've been displaying every uh, every week my last year's nationwide paint scheme. And for those that may be newer to the podcast, it goes like this. On Sundays, I have a ritual, and then I'll get back to my complaint, and then we'll preview Richmond. On Sundays, I have a, a, a ritual that I go through for, well, Sundays or Saturdays, depending on the race. Um, on, we'll just take a Sunday morning. On, on Sunday morning, I usually, you know, usually after church, um, I will come home, and I will uh, put the 124 scale... A Dale Jr. diecast car that I have, whatever paint scheme he's running that weekend, or at least the close proximity to it. Like this weekend, I still have the old Dia Mountain Dew paint scheme, so that one will go up there. But I'll take that car, and I'll put it on top of the center surround sound speaker that is just above my television in the living room. Okay, and then I will uh, wear my Dale Jr. gear, which usually consists of the hat, the t-shirt. Uh, I have some Dale Jr. like workout shorts, and then socks. Um, I bring out my 164 scale car that stays with me. I have a laptop computer that I run race day on from NASCAR.com. I have an iPad that I run, or race view. I have an iPad that I run the race view app on. That way, if I need to pitch off and go online for something, I have one program up and running so I don't miss anything if anything were to happen and I don't miss any of the in-car radio chatter. Um, before the race starts, I will get on NASCAR 15 on the Xbox, and I've got a, a racing wheel and a racing setup, and it's a 
basically it's a it's a it's a shelving unit, a plastic shelving unit that I constructed uh, that I put my racing wheel on that I can pull up to my chair and basically creates a, the you know the cockpit of the car, and I will run whatever race. Uh, whatever racetrack we are racing at. And basically there's a, there's a season mode on NASCAR 15 that you can run. So I'm basically working through the season on NASCAR 15 along with Dale Jr. working through the season as well, running the same races on my Xbox that he's racing every single weekend. I don't run the full race. I think I only do like 10%. And so usually it's about a half hour to 45 minutes worth of, uh, worth of gameplay. So that's my that's my ritual every single Sunday. I've been doing that in some fashion for 15, 14, 15 years, I guess. Right? Does that sound right? You know, uh, so because it pretty much matches with my marriage, and and we will have been married uh, sixteen years uh, coming up here in um, in May. So all that being said, and the question that I have for you is. Drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com. I'd like to know what your traditions are, and if you're like me, do you like to have the gear for that weekend? Does that even matter to you? It just it's it's it is such a um, what's the thing I'm looking for? Like like it 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 bothers me if I have a close proximity, right? So like if he's got um, this decision. Uh, paint scheme this weekend, but I don't have any decision gear, then I'll just wear, you know, Mountain Dew gear because I have Mountain Dew gear. Okay. So this was my point. And this is what this is what I wanted to say. What I don't like is that a lot of times when they release new gear for Dale Jr., you can't get that paint scheme gear until after the race is over. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I know there's a level of um, secrecy that they have with some of these paint schemes, and sometimes they don't, they don't even reveal the paint scheme until the week of the race. I get that. But it's a bummer because, like this weekend, you can go to uh, DaleJr.com, and you can purchase a bunch of Decision gear. <clears throat> They've got one team collection black Decision t-shirt, really good-looking t-shirt. Has the graphics for the Decision 88 paint scheme on it. They have the diecast cars available. They even have a uh, they even have a hat a hat available. But when you go to click on the item, say if you want uh, you want to buy the 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 Dale Junior 88 Mountain Dew Decision T-shirt, right at twenty four ninety five. I'm looking at it right now on the uh, on the website at DaleJr.com. Uh, this product is available for pre order and it will ship the week of May 9th. That does not do me any good on April 24th when the race is running. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one, and that's why I'd like you to email me, uh, talkshownerd at gmail.com, to find out if I'm the only one that's like, that, that's like that. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to wear commemorative gear from a paint scheme he already ran. I've got several T-shirts that I still wear. I mean, even the um, the Breast Cancer Awareness T-shirt, I really like that one from a number of years ago. Uh, that was a paint scheme that he ran at uh, Martinsville, which was a darker blue, all blue paint scheme that had the, uh, the, the hot pink highlights on it. I really like that shirt. Of course, the patriotic um, paint scheme, the, uh, the black, a red, white, and blue flag uh, paint scheme that he ran uh, and one Daytona with last year. I mean, I'll wear that stuff later on, but, you know, I, I don't know if I'll go and purchase a Decision t-shirt. If he won the race, probably, because I like to get commemorative shirts for the races that Dale Jr. won. But, uh, you know, I am certainly haven't purchased one now because I wouldn't get it before the race. If they made it available before the race, I probably would purchase a shirt beforehand. Like the Grey Ghost one. You can get the Grey Ghost Darlington gear before Darlington. And so that I'll go online and I'll purchase. That way I have that gear for that Sunday. Again, Dale Jr. NASCAR problems. But I'd be curious what you do. Do you have any rituals being a Dale Jr. fan that you partake in uh, every weekend? Drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com. I'd love to hear uh, if I'm the only freak out there or if there are some of you that are as freaky as, uh, as I am in terms of your uh, – in, ter <laughs> in terms of your fandom, by the way, um, it's pretty funny because one more quick note, and then we'll we'll preview uh, the race for uh, for Sunday for for Dale Jr. But um, I did finally get. To, I, I had a pair of uh, low cut socks, Dale Jr. socks that I that I had for a number of years. They had the eighty eight on them, right? Uh, and I wore those suckers out. I think I wore them basically until they fell off my feet when the holes got too big. 
And uh, I haven't been able to get any Dale Jr. socks since then. And I like to, I like having socks. I mean, I've, I've got Star Wars socks for crying out loud. Uh, when I went to Phoenix, I was able to pick up some Exalta um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. socks. But they're bright red and yellow. They're so obnoxious. So when I get in my gear for the weekend, <laughs> I put those socks on. Like, none of it matches. I'm such a nerd. But like Melinda, my wife, was looking at me going, really, you're wearing the socks? I go, heck, yeah, I'm wearing the socks. They're really thick, though. They're super, they're, they're, they're super uh, comfy. Uh, it would just be nice that they put out some standard, uh, some standard socks. I have the shoes, too. They don't sell the shoes anymore. But uh, Revo had those Dale Earnhardt shoes that they were selling um, a number of years ago. And uh, I have two pairs of those. And they're still in pretty good shape. Um, the ones that I have one pair that I can't wear all that often anymore because they're just too flat, but I have a pair of sort of low cut sneakers that I still wear uh, quite a bit. I see. I just, I dig that kind of stuff. I like to be able to go out in public and, um, and show my fandom. All right, let's get into, uh, to, to the Richmond race. We got just enough time left and the podcast went way longer than I had expected today. They unloaded the car, um, this week and it wasn't very fast. And I don't know what's going. I don't know. It's like the team is doing well. Dale Jr. is doing well, but it's like I I feel as if they're a little bit off, and they're having to play catch up every weekend. And I think I mentioned that last week, but I I can't help but wonder if this team actually gets gets in gear and starts unloading fast consistently consistently that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, qualifying got rained out, and. Probably a good thing. Dale Jr. will start 16th based off of the practice speeds. Uh, didn't really have an opportunity to look at the lap averages, but they were focusing on Friday on – they were in race trim for a while, but it was – but uh, based on the weather, it was kind of um, kind of irrelevant. Uh, and then he put up one good lap of 17th, and I think somebody has to drop to the back, so he'll be starting 16th on Sunday. And honestly, I- I'm fine with that. Uh, given uh, the problems and the, and the difficulties that they've had as of late in qualifying, uh, starting 16th is fine. When you slide over to uh, today, when the podcast is being recorded, and look at practice, it seemed as if he was struggling quite a bit in practice, but they made a lot of gains on the car. Uh, late in the run, he put up his fat, one of his fastest laps. And, uh, and again, you can't put a lot of stock into... The single lap runs right because they're not they're in race trim, they're not in uh, they're not in qualifying trim. However, here's the interesting thing to note: when you look at um, when you look at when Dale Jr. made that fast run, it was way late in the run. So he put up his fastest lap of uh, 16th fastest. Again, you can't really put a lot of stock in it because you don't know what the tire situation was, but you got to assume that's on fresh tires, right? But that was, um, again, that was 29 laps into uh, practice today, and he ran about 83 laps total. So that tells me that at one point in practice, they ended up making some big, some, some big gains. When you look um, at the lap averages, um, it was 27th uh, to 36th. Uh, those 10 laps between 27 and 36 was when he ran his fastest consecutive 10 lap average. Um, and he was sitting there 12th. When you begin to, again, look at the number of guys above him, okay, um, from 12th to 1st, and I begin to eliminate some names, I'm I'm going with a top five car uh, tomorrow. Uh, Dale Jr.'s had some some luck at Richmond in the past. Uh, I'm going to break down a little bit of the stats here in, in just a moment, but I'm giving you my prediction a little bit early. Uh, and based off some commentary of other drivers, I was paying attention on Twitter what some of the other top-running drivers were saying, whether it was Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, um, Carl Edwards, uh, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, and a number of them were mentioning how Dale Jr. was faster than them. you got to take it with a grain of salt. You don't know what the uh, intention is um, at the time when they're making those comments, and maybe it's just inspiration to those other drivers. But the other drivers were talking about Dale Jr. And so if you have other crew chiefs and other drivers mentioning Dale Jr.'s speed, then that's a really good sign. Jimmy Johnson looks good. Kevin Harvick looks good. And Carl Edwards looks, looks good as well. But Carl was one of the ones who was saying that Dale Jr. was about a tenth faster than um, than he was. 
My Nerd World. I stopped the podcast there for just a moment because they were 